Hello again, welcome back to our Work Answer Day live stream. I am so happy that we are now shining a light on a region that has been embracing this campaign wholeheartedly, and that is uh, Latin America. Although this uh, segment will be conducted in English, um, I want to take a moment to, to welcome uh, our viewers from, um, from Latin America in, in Spanish. So, bienvenidos y bienvenidas a, a todos los que nos estáis viendo desde América Latina. Muchas gracias por estar ahí. Eh, tenemos un, uh, un, bueno, un panel de lujo, así que me voy a permitir el, eh, ir presentarlos y continuamos en inglés. Um, let me introduce introduce you all to our guests. We have uh, Sandra Aquino, that is uh, an accountant by profession, mother of three, uh, cancer survivor and patient advocate, most importantly. After being diagnosed with breast cancer in 2010, she became involved with volunteer work, and now she's the president of the Asociación de Pacientes con Cancer, Fe y Esperanza de Honduras. She provides, they provide support to those living with cancer in Honduras. So welcome, Sandra. Very nice to see you today. <laughs> Thank you, Laura. And uh, um, let me also introduce you to El Maestro, Kenji Lopez Cuevas. Uh, he's the founder and president of Cancer Warriors Mexico. He is also a member of the board of directors of UICC since 2020. Kenji is a Mexican lawyer. He has a master's degree in public policy. And after cancer touched him, uh, his family personally, he decided to formalize this NGO focusing on prompting legal initiatives and public policies on behalf of children and adults diagnosed with cancer in his country. Thank you very much, Kenji, for joining us today. It's uh, always a pleasure. Thank you, Laura. It's a pleasure for us. So now that we, we have introduced you to, to everyone, I think it's a, it's a good time to, to set the scene a little bit in, in the region, in, in Latin America and Central America. Uh, so, Sandra, why don't we start with you, perhaps? Um, no, actually, sorry, Kenji, we are going to start with you <laughs> and, uh, and set a little bit that, uh, that scene in, uh, in Latin America and uh, what, what basically are the gaps in cancer control in LATAM. Thank you very much, uh, Laura. It's a pleasure. And I would like to take this time to congratulate you and all the wonderful team of the USCC for the organization and all this powerful and inspirational job you are doing to commemorate the World Cancer Day. Of course, we have take, uh, taken these um, months, these past months, to organize as NGOs part of the UICC membership and to discuss and to talk about the different gaps we have here in the region. Uh, this um, helped us to construct the actions that we have conducted during this, uh, these months. The first one is a gap that is, we have confidential in the region as countries, is the lack of medical treatments, the oncological medical treatments for our minors and adults. It is, um, it is conducted because of the pandemic, the COVID-19, but also because of different uh, administration initiatives conducted by our uh, governments in different countries. But also we have um, focused our efforts in have more public uh, economic resources in order to focus on the fight against cancer and also uh, the control of this disease. We also uh, are asking in different uh, forums uh, in different spaces, the necessity to put economic resources in order to execute our law, our law that it is a mechanism to fight against this disease. We as NGOs of the Latin America region consider that legal mechanisms are resources to which we must bet on this fight against cancers since they can uh, be solutions that have permanent impact on the control and prevention of cancer. Uh, and I would like to talk later about what we are doing uh, on this uh, behalf because, for example, Chile established the national cancer law on last year, on 2020, with objective is to establish regulatory framework for the planning and development and execution of public policies, programs, and actions aimed to establish the causes and preventing the increases 
in the incidence of cancer. Other good example is Peru. Peru published a national cancer law uh, on last year. This law aims to guarantee universal free and priority coverage of health services. And another one is El Salvador, which published this year the special law for the prevention, cancer control and care for uh, cancer patients. And also in Mexico, we have adopted last January 2021, the general law for the timely or early prevention of cancer for children and adolescents. Thank you, Laura. Thank you so much, Kenji. Uh, that's, uh, it's incredible all the, all the work that, uh, that has been done in, in the region. Let me go now to, to you, Sandra, uh, perhaps uh, give us a little bit of perspective as well on, on what are those, uh, those cancer gaps that you're finding in, uh, in, uh, well, from your experience in, in Central America and perhaps in, in the region. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Laura. I'm honored to be addressing important facts and issues uh, today related to cancer in Latin America. And uh, in Latin America, cancer is a major public um, health issue. The gap affects everyone, perhaps not you, but someone you know. And um, as a fact, let me tell you that every minute across the world, 37 people are diagnosed with cancer and more than 19 people die from the disease. So that I could mention some of the major cancer care gaps, such as the lack of timely diagnosis. Uh, screening is not reached to the most of the population in Latin America. There are major problems with service quality, infrastructure, follow-ups and inadequate facilities. Also, there are variations between countries, um, either in uh, Central America or South America in terms of cancer control effort. Not all countries have a national plan control can for cancer. Moreover, understanding of what an effective plan needs to uh, contain is often lacking and frequently lack of resources is an issue for our countries. Another major gap that we find is that our countries faces um, what we call um, very uh, little money on health budgets. Uh, they're very small compared to developed countries. Cancer is now a priority for the limited funds and also the result in most of these countries is that they have insufficient resources for cancer needs. And also uh, we don't have enough resources for prevention, early detection, um, treatment. And that's a, a problem that most of our countries faces. Sandra, uh, it really is uh, a, a great uh, summary of, uh, of loads of those gaps uh, that we are finding uh, and is, is really something that resonates not just in the Latin America region but I think globally so you are really uh, mentioning some of those uh, really important gaps. Um, Kenja, I would like to go back to you now. Uh, you know, we are, you are based in Mexico, that's kind of where your organization is based. Can you tell us a little, can we tell us a little, can you tell us a little bit more about how the situation is in Mexico and what are you already doing to, to try to fill those gaps? Yes, of course, Laura. Well, our situation is very similar uh, in contrast with uh, different countries in the same region in Latin America. That's the reason why we are taking this opportunity of the commemoration of this great day to raise our voices, to ask our authorities to execute our laws, to execute our national cancer programs and to defend. The most important thing is to defend the rights of patients diagnosed with cancer. We have facing here from two years and a half, a lack of treatments, which of course affects the health of minors and adults with this disease. And what we are doing taking this opportunity is that we have organized together 45 uh, civil organizations, members of the UICC, and uh, we have we are executing different of a number of activities in the framework of this great day, World Cancer Day 2022. And uh, one 
very important I would like to share with all, all the audience is that we have executed an exhortation with a call, this is the exhortation, <laughs> with a call to action uh, to address uh, to the decision makers to share on social uh, networks and supported by the NGOs members of UIC Latin America region to urgently address as a matter of priority uh, a certain number of points. One of them is the early diagnosed and equitable treatment of cancer in the region. Another one is a correct and adequate implementation of national plans and programs, as my colleague Sandra just mentioned. And uh, another one is the allocation of sufficient and necessary public resources for the prompt and expedition care uh, of this condition. And we also have a video that you already saw, uh, and I know that we will broadcast in this, uh, in this forum. It's, it is a video shared on our social media with the participation of all the organizations with that we are members of the UICC and we are uh, expressing a call to action to the decision makers. We have a lot of faith in this day and a lot of faith that we are representing in a good way what our patients need in our region. Absolutely, Kenji, it's, uh, it's wonderful. It's, uh, as you said, 45 organizations from, I think, uh, uh, at least 14 countries, which is something truly remarkable. And I think uh, it's, uh, it, it bears mentioning that this is something quite unique that the Latin America region is, is able to, to convey and mobilize. So I really want to congratulate you all because I know that there has been a lot of work put into, into this uh, document that you just shared as well as on the, all the activities that, uh, that you have uh, put together and the video that we will, uh, we will see at the end of, uh, of this section. I would like to go back uh, to you, Sandra. Perhaps you want to tell us, like you are based in Honduras and uh, perhaps uh, going a little bit closer to, to, your, to your relationship, like to, to your day-to-day -day life with cancer patients in Honduras. Can you perhaps share with us a little bit of that experience and also maybe a message of hope as well for the future? Of course, just to give you an idea, in 2020, uh, an estimated of 10,628 new cases of cancer were diagnosed. Um, and this is really um, a, a reason for what we really are uh, always fighting for. Uh, in Honduras, we lack cancer registries, which provide essential information for an effective cancer control. And healthcare, uh, you receive cancer, you receive a healthcare cancer control depending on the, your health system. You could be either for the kind of cancer you are being detected, either prevention for treatment for palliative care services, uh, and that's not in all included. There are areas with are the poorest in Honduras with no access to an specialist. Uh, we don't have enough human resources. The equipment for cancer control are sometimes obsolete um, since it remains in, in urban areas. Making diagnosis is less likely. Adding the travel expenses that most people have to make um, and it, this adds to the cost of the treatment. Also, um, um, since you asked, uh, we have uh, pronounced all these differences to the policy makers. We have expressed to our new government that cancer has to be considered a priority um, to update the cancer control uh, plan. We need uh, to have all those um, uh, technologies available, such as radiotherapy, mammography, um, and to extend prevention with appropriate screening programs and early detection, as uh, Kenjin has mentioned. The provision, again, of financial support is very important for our region, especially in our country. Investment in cancer healthcare is a must. It's not a something that they need to discuss. It's something that needs to be uh, as part of our plan, or part of the government plan. Thank you, Sandra.
Uh, I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't be more clear about it. Uh, it there is, this is a clear call for action, and this is what this campaign is, is all about, to, to making those uh, important uh, requests that, uh, to governments, to decision makers, and, and there is a, a, a need to prioritize cancer and to close those gaps. Uh, Kenji, perhaps uh, you want to leave us with, uh, with uh, some uh, comments as well and a message of hope. Uh, I think that if anybody can uh, convey that, uh, that uh, um, strength and, uh, and passion is, uh, is, uh, is you. So I will leave, uh, I will leave you to, to say like the last uh, message perhaps uh, for, the, for the public around uh, this campaign, uh, Kenji. Thank you, Laura. It is a huge responsibility to provide with this message. But uh, yes, the battle against cancer needs all of us. Uh, you and us, we all know that we live in different countries. We speak different languages. And yes, we, we have different gastronomy. But the enemy, Laura, is the same. The enemy is one as, and is cancer. The advantage we have right now is that we have a, a huge power together because cancer is only one and we are many and many from time to time and together we are stronger. Let's keep this battle to close the care gap. <laughs> Excellent. Muchísimas gracias uh, to both of you. Uh, I think uh, it's really been wonderful to have you. Uh, I think uh, we will leave our viewers with the amazing video that, uh, that these uh, 45 organizations have been uh, working towards and I think there is no better way to show how, how passionate and, and uh, incredibly engaging is the work that uh, the Latin American region has been doing uh, on this campaign. So I leave you to watch the video for yourself. Thank you. Y desafortunadamente, en esa misma hora, más de 150 pierden la vida a causa de esta enfermedad. La detección tardía, la carencia de recursos públicos suficientes y la falta de implementación de políticas públicas en el control de esta enfermedad. Generan brechas que ocasionan desigualdades en el acceso a una mejor expectativa de vida para niñas, niños, adolescentes, mujeres y hombres diagnosticados con cáncer. Hoy, 4 de febrero, es Día Mundial contra el Cáncer, una iniciativa liderada por la Unión Internacional para el Control del Cáncer desde hace 22 años, cuyo objetivo es concientizar, sensibilizar y movilizar la comunidad mundial para realizar un progreso sustantivo en la lucha contra el cáncer. Por unos cuidados más justos es el lema para este 2022 cuyo propósito es reconocer y entender las inequidades del sector oncológico. Y así lograremos en cáncer una atención más justa y equitativa en todo el mundo. Hoy, los países de la región de América Latina, miembros de la UICC, nos unimos en una sola voz. Porque aunque mantengamos diferentes culturas, luchamos contra un mismo enemigo en común, el cáncer. En el marco de esta fecha tan importante, hacemos un llamado público a las autoridades de nuestra región con la facultad de incidir en esta batalla. A impulsar acciones para solucionar las problemáticas presentes en la región. Acciones que garanticen el abasto de medicamentos oncológicos en tiempo y forma. Acciones que aseguren una detección temprana, un tratamiento integral y de calidad y una investigación eficiente del cáncer. Acciones que impulsen la publicación de normas y reglamentos para instrumentar nuevas leyes y programas nacionales de cáncer. Y principalmente acciones que reflejen su compromiso para luchar por unos cuidados más justos en esta batalla. Recuperar la salud no debe estar condicionado al nivel de ingresos. Al lugar de residencia, al género, edad u origen étnico. Cada persona con cáncer debe de tener la garantía y que cuenta con las armas para ganar esta batalla. Hoy contamos contigo. Contamos, contamos contigo. contigo.